television. We are redeemed. Be redeemed. Welcome to another exciting episode of Springs of Life. I'm talking about today. Springs of Life is a Bible-based program geared towards the expounding of God's Word in the hearts of men. Like always, we trust God to teach us. We trust Him to shed light on His Word. We trust Him to give us revelation. And ultimately, we trust Him to make us to look like Jesus. The Bible in Psalm 100 and 19 verse 11 says thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you if you look at verse 105 it says thy word is a light lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path and verse 130 of that same chapter says the entrance of thy word giveth light and it giveth understanding unto the simple now that's the word of God that we're going to be learning today God is going to be teaching us himself and i know that he's going to touch your life is going to touch mine in jesus name i trust that you're doing good i trust that god is dealing kindly with you i trust that god is teaching you on a daily basis i trust that he's enlightening you and is also lifting you high my prayer for you is that god will continually to bless you and make you a blessing to many generations now to share god's word with us in the studio today is our dearly beloved pastor, someone I really admire. His name is Pastor Kunle Rotimi, and he is a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, pastor in charge of the New Covenant area, Lagos Province 8. It's all good to have you here today. Thank you so much for having uh, me. Thank you for taking time out. Thank you. I know that God is going to bless his children today. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, we'll just have a short word of prayer, all please. Right. Before we continue. Father, thank you for the privilege once again to hear and learn your word. Thank you, Jesus. As we gather at your feet again, Father, send your word expressly. Amen. Let your word have a free course and be glorified once again today. Amen. Let your name alone be glorified. Amen. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank God. Now, the topic before us today is acceptable worship acceptable worship the truth is the the, the term worship um, to so many people has actually been misconstrued but I want to believe that God is going to teach us you know what acceptable worship is as we go on with today's program I'm looking at it firstly before we go to you know the topic yes, acceptable man. worship the program this program is tagged springs of life mm. and when you hear that what what does that you know tell you yeah, when I hear springs of life, I, the first thing that comes to my mind is the word of the Lord that is quick and powerful. The word of the Lord that gives life because all our springs come out of him and he is the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. So when I, when I hear springs of life, I, 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 the first thing that comes to my mind is a life-giving program. A program that uses out life and life flows from it and touches many people and many situations all people. right life flows from it and yeah. touches many people yeah. and also many situations yes, all right just to inform you um, you can connect you know live on YouTube and you can just type springs of life underscore mm. acceptable worship three springs of life underscore acceptable worship three and you'll be connected live on YouTube mm. all right thank you now now acceptable worship what does the word accept means okay. acceptance acceptable well acceptable simply means from going by um, the dictionary it simply means to receive something that is acceptable simply means something that is received with pleasure something that is worthy so that that's what it basically means something that is received with pleasure something that is worthy something that is delightsome Okay. That's what acceptable means. Received with pleasure. With, with pleasure. Something that is worthy. Worthy. Delightsome. delightsome. I think I like those choice words. <laughs> um, now, what is worship? 
Well, worship from um, Nelson's Bible Dictionary. Worship simply means the, to express the worth of a thing. That's worship. To express the, the worth of a thing, the value of a thing. Uh, which other word can I use now? The, the awesomeness of a thing, the, the preciousness of a thing. Of a thing. thing. So that expression of it is what we call worship. So it could be a thing, it could be a person, it could be anybody. But worship simply means to express the worth of anything that it's an object of, of value to you. Okay, yes, express sir. the worth of yeah. anything. Yes. Sir. Now let's come to the topic proper. Exactly. Acceptable worship. Acceptable now, worship. What's acceptable worship? Well, I, I, I believe that when we talk about worship on this program, we are talking about the acceptable worship of the Most High God. Okay. So if I look at acceptable worship, I'll look at a worship that is targeted towards God, a worship that is received with pleasure by God, a worship that delights God, a worship that pleasures the heart of God, a worship that God responds to, a worship that God receives. And the evidence are there that, oh, this is a beneficiary, a recipient of God's visitation after acceptable worship has been offered. Acceptable worship also means a worship that is in accordance with the commandment of God. Because not just anybody can worship God. There, is, there, are, there are laid down rules, there are laid down steps. So acceptable worship is a worship that is in accordance with the Don't forget, in the book of Leviticus, when the sons of Aaron tried to offer up incense, the Bible says they offered up strange fire, fire. which God did not command. So, acceptable worship has to be in accordance with the word of God. Again, acceptable worship must be preceded by obedience. In other words, it is mockery to claim to worship a God that you don't obey. Hmm. It's mockery. So, obedience precedes every act of acceptable worship. Also, acceptable worship from what Jesus said in, in Matthew 22, verse 37. Matthew 22, 22 verse 37. 37. He said, we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our mind. In other words, acceptable worship is wholehearted. It, it involves everything. It involves you putting everything into it. It's not half-hearted. It's not, it's not mechanical. It's not, it's not something that you just do out of obligation. Lukewarm. No, no, it's not lukewarm. It involves your spirit. It involves your soul. It involves your body. So, acceptable worship must be wholehearted. It must be done uh, spiritedly. It must be done energetically. It must be done fervently and intensely. These are the Characteristics of acceptable worship to God. Whoa, that means as a Christian, I got a lot of work to do. Definitely, because <laughs> we are we are we are created. Every creature of God, from Revelations chapter three, verse thirteen, everything God created was created to worship Him. To worship. How much more we that are created in His own image and after His own likeness. So, for me, worship, acceptable worship, is a full-time job for a Christian. It's a full-time job. It's not something we do on Sunday morning. Whoa. Okay, it's, it's not just um, no. lifting up of hands. No. Um, those are just expressions of it. Acceptable worship is something we do every moment once we know and understand what it entails. Yeah, you talked about obedience preceding yes, sir. Um, worship. So that means um, you cannot afford to live in... I'm seen and um, expect to worship God. Yeah, and you it's, can. It's, it's mockery. It's mockery. Listen, the Bible tells us that Abraham took his son after God had given up a commandment. And the Bible says in, in Genesis 22 that immediately, early in the morning, after that instruction was given, Abraham departed for the place that God had told him about. And when he got to a particular spot on the third day, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes and he saw the place. And he told his servant, said, stay here. I am the lad. We we'll go yonder and worship. worship. That was the first place that the word worship was actually mentioned. I and the lad will go worship. Obedience precedes worship. worship. So you can't say, you can't be living in sin. You can't be living in rebellion and claim to be worshiping God. You are worshiping something that is not the most high God. Whoa, 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 whoa. So when one goes to church, one needs to go with that mindset that yes, sir. I'm going to worship God, but it has to be done acceptably acceptably not just the way yeah I think and that is do. why it's something that we must be conscious about it's something that we do deliberately it's something that we prepare ourselves for listen the bible says in john chapter 4 where jesus was talking about worship again in the new testament he was talking about he was talking to the samaritan woman and he said something he said god 
those that will worship God must, must, not may, may. must, it, that's the condition, must worship God in spirit, mean, which means wholeheartedly involves, because your spirit is your real being. Your real being. In spirit, then in truth. truth. In other words, in total submission to the will of God. You can't separate wash your spirit and truth from acceptable worship. It must be done with all of your spirit. It must be done in total submission to the will of God. In other words, the word of God prepares us, or prepares the way rather, for acceptable worship. Acceptable worship. Now, growing up as a child, yes, sir. I grew up um, with, um, you know, I had religious parents. We yeah. go to church, and it was a Sunday thing, yeah. and um, they weren't born again, mm. and everything. And it was like that for so many people. Mm. So they go, they go to church with this mindset that um, as long as they go to church on Sunday, Sunday, then everything is fine. They please God. <laughs> so we can say that that's not pleasing God. No, no, no. That's it's not, not acceptable. It's, no, it's not All right. acceptable. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Now, a man qualified to be a recipient of worship. Because when you were describing and um, um, defining worship, you made us to understand that, okay, it's, it's targeted at, you know, um, at a particular thing. Mm, yeah. And um, now, a man qualified to receive worship mm. are in, men qualified in the real sense of it in the context of what we are discussing today men are not qualified to receive worship and it's in the bible i'll first take you to acts chapter 10. acts chapter 10. when peter stepped into the house of cornelius and said i'm here on the instruction of the holy spirit to share certain things with you and this okay. was what happened in acts chapter 10 verse 25 Bible says, as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet and worshipped him. But look at the response in verse 26. But Peter lifted him up, saying, stand up. I myself am also a man. man. In other words, I'm not the recipient of worship. I'm not. Stand, I'm also a man. And that gives us a clue that men should not, must not be the recipient or be the object of our worship. worship. I'll also give you another example again because there are also some denominations that also believe that, oh, we could worship angels because they're spirit beings. No. In the book of Revelations also, the Revelations book of 19, Revelations. just to balance it also, the book of Revelations chapter 19, uh, even John the Divine also had an encounter with one of the angels. And this was what happened. Revelations chapter 19, 19. verse 9 to 10. Said, then he said to me, write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true saints of God. Look at verse 10 now. He said, and this was John recounting the experience. He said, And I fell at his, feet, at his feet to worship him. But what did the angel say? He said, But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the angel pointed John to whom he should worship. Worship God. God should be, must be, the sole object of our worship. Worship, worship God, not man. Worship God, not material things, not your wealth, not your money, not your parents. Worship God. Not, your, cr not your cross. Not, 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 a cross. not the cross. Not the cross, that, not the, the pendant that you wear around your neck. No, not your rosary. No. Worship God. It's stated clearly in black and white. Worship God. Anything outside of that is not acceptable worship. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Now, how will the person know that his or worship is acceptable by God? Because we've talked about obedience and everything, but you know that, okay, I worship God. I know God accepted my worship. Mm. You, know, I've, I, you know, I'm worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Right. I know, I know. How do I know? How do we know if our worship is acceptable? I, I, will, I will give you, can I, maybe just, let me just make this illustration before I answer okay, that question. Okay, please do. Please if, do. If, if the president of Nigeria today decides to come to your house, how would we know that he has visited your house after he has left? One, before his arrival, preparations would have been made. Okay. Things that were not in order would have been put in order. If, like, if most, most likely you would like to paint your house all over, True. get the best of dishes, you know, get the place sparkling. When he comes, he comes with an entourage. 
everybody in the neighborhood would hear the noise and the sirens and, and, and the bodyguards and the policemen and the escorts. After he has left, there will be no doubt in anybody's mind that somebody of that caliber has visited your house. The signs will be there. The proofs will be there. I'm trying mm, to make an illustration. Okay. God cannot step into our worship and our lives will not evidence it. Mm. God cannot visit a man and the man will remain the same. He came into the house of Abraham and sorted out a problem of 25 years with just a pronouncement. Every mm. one that God visits, because when we talk about worship, we are bringing God into our atmosphere. We are bringing God into our environment. Why? The Bible says in Psalm 22, God inhabits the praises of Israel. In other words, when we offer acceptable worship, we are expecting God to dwell in it, to inhabit it, to, 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 to abide there. So when God visits us in the course of acceptable worship, there will be fruits. Fruits. There will be signs. There will be wonders. There will be miracles. There will be testimonies. Above all, there will be this joy. The Bible says in his presence, there is fullness, fullness of, joy. of joy and pleasures forevermore. forevermore. There will be this joy that always attends the presence of God. That when you come out of the place of worship, there is a joy that comes out with you that makes you to dare anything, damn anything and face a life with a new and a, a renewed confidence that you are more than a conqueror, conqueror through him that loved you. So when we talk about the evidence, it's there. The signs will be there. God cannot, God has not visited any man in scripture without proofs. And the proofs are will be seen by all men. And that is I, that's my belief that if truly we offer acceptable worship in our services, in our churches, there will be miracles. There will be signs. We come to the redemption camp, we see signs, we see miracles. We go to other places, we see signs, we see miracles. Because anywhere God attends, those are the landmarks to show that he has been there before. Whoa, really expository. Yeah. I really bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so that means for every life that is truly in worship, yes, there's meant, there are meant to be testimonies. There will be testimonies. Meant because in, be in worship, we, we, we become carriers of God. Let me just put it that way. We become carriers of God. We wear God when we are in worship. In other words, anything we do, we do it in God. It's as if it's God facing that problem. It's as if it's God facing that challenge. And of course we know that the mountains will skip like rams in his presence. The little hills will skip like lambs. Jordan will be driven back. The sea will see him and flee. In other words, problems can't stand the his presence. presence can't, God. Nothing can stand his presence. So our real challenge is truly bringing him down in acceptable worship in order to face the things that confront our lives yeah you talked about thank you so much you talked about joy that comes yeah. you know yeah the, the, the joy peace, of the lord yeah, the joy they, also peace um, yes, this scripture came to mind that thou keep him in perfect peace whose mind, mind is stayed, stayed upon thee so someone whose mind is stayed upon the lord yeah. is actually in worship yeah how do you how is your mind stayed on him in worship because you you, you the, 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 there's a way that worship helps us to refocus I'll give you an example. Sometimes you come back or you're going through a challenge and you are distracted, you are discouraged, you are depressed. If you could just get into the presence of God and offer worship, worship corrects your focus. Worship helps you to keep your eyes on the author and the finish sure. of your faith again. That's why in worship, our focus is corrected. Our focus is, 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 is stayed on him. And as long as you keep looking at him, the Bible says they looked at him and they were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. So in worship, we keep God before us. And don't forget, the psalmist said, I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall never be moved. Wow. All right. That means um, to retain that focus, then, yes, that means there are certain things in life that can actually um, work against one living in worship. Yes, sir. Um, that's acceptable worship. Yes, sir. So what can we regard as enemies of worship in a man's life? One, self. Okay. When you're so much occupied and preoccupied with yourself. You know, there are people like that. You, When you get around them, it's all about themselves. They just talk about themselves 24-7. Self is the greatest enemy of worship. In other words, when you promote self above God, when you promote 
uh, your intelligence, your, 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 your education, your connection, your certificate. Uh, and there are people like that that pride themselves in all of those things. So those things would never allow them to be able to offer God acceptable worship. worship. Now, the challenges of life, the attacks of the devil, those are things that are also uh, derail us or distract us from acceptable worship. But the Bible says, looking away from those things, that's in, in Hebrews chapter 12, Amplified Version. He said, looking away. In other words, those things want to get our attention. The attack of the enemy wants to get our attention. Oh, I've not paid my house rent. That challenge wants to get your attention. attention. Oh, your child is sick. That's what, those things want to get your attention. The Bible says that we must be able to discipline ourselves to the point that we can look away from from those, those things, things and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And the example was given to us that Jesus, because of the joy that was set before him, he was able to what? Endure the cross and despise the shame. And we saw the reward of that at the end of the day. So there are enemies of worship abound around us environment, TV, activities. pleasures, activities, That's church activities, church activities, yeah. yeah. Meetings here, yeah, meetings there. All of those things could become a distraction. Success could become a distraction. Prosperity could become a distraction. Comfort could become a distraction, distraction. of acceptable worship. Because sometimes, oh. at a point, we might get to a level of comfort that we don't really want to seek God like we used to do. It's a temptation that comes to every man that is rising in the things of God and is rising in, in the ladders of success. It's a big, big challenge to keep that at um, attention fixed on Christ 24-7. Uh, 24-7. Now, I really love that because I, I was actually going to talk about, from your explanation, it's clear that worship is a full-time job. It's a full-time job. I mean, you live to worship. We live to worship. We breathe to worship. We eat to worship. We study the word to worship. How does that happen? In the course of the study of the word of God, the Holy Spirit breathes on the word of God. Light is shed into our hearts revelation knowledge comes to us and the truth is that every revelational knowledge of god triggers worship revelation is one of the raw materials for a life of constant worship and that's why when we get ourselves buried in the world bible says beholding his face as in a glass the glory of the Lord. So we are changed from, into that same image from glory, glory, to glory to glory as by the Spirit of God. So the more we behold Him in His Word, the more of His nature, His works, His wonders is revealed to us. And the more of that opens up, up to worship. Sometimes you just read something in the Bible, it just blows your understanding. And the next thing is, Hallelujah. You lift, you lift the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless oh. God. Halle That's worship. So sometimes I also look at worship as the response of our heart to the revelations of God. The response of our yeah, heart that, to the that revelation reference, of God. That, okay. that holy reference of, of our heart in response to the revelations that we receive in his word and through his messengers. It, it propels, it triggers worship. From the way this is being explained right now, um, just for um, those watching, yes, um, it, it, it sounds like worship is sweet. Worship is beautiful. Worship is life. <laughs> Worship is life. Because um, when something you don't enjoy a particular thing, then you don't want to do it. The reason why so, people have seen worship as a body is because they've seen worship, they do worship mechanically. It's not born out of revelation. They see it as a duty, an obligation that I must fulfill every Sunday. They've not seen it as a lifestyle. They've not seen it as something that is part and parcel of their nature. You see, we must come to that point. It's the, through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that we can come out of the, the religious uh, form of worship that we all were born into and we almost, almost grew up in. In other words, go to church on Sunday, sit in a particular way, and after that you said we are worship God. No, worship is more than that. Worship is an attitude. Worship is, is, is a posture. Worship is a posture, it's an attitude. Worship is a spiritual thing. Worship is not something that is, is expressed by just a song. Songs are expressions of worship, but worship is deeper than, a, deeper song. than a, deeper a song. It's deeper than a song. A song could be an expression of, of worship. worship. Deeper. Worship is 
spirit seated it it it, it 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 comes from the bowels of your spirit from the recesses of your spirit that's where worship should come forth from and when it comes forth like that it becomes a sweet smelling sorrow which god receives with pleasure and he gives you a reward for that thank you sir that means um, you don't plan to worship you worship worship should be spontaneous hallelujah amen praise god worship you are driving you're not planning by five o'clock i'll start to no, worship no Okay. Should be something that should be part and parcel of you. It, it starts in your vocabulary. It starts in the choice of your words. By saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. You're already, you're already fine-tuning your spirit. You understand? You're already setting yourself in that worship mode. So it's something that we must do consistently. Not, okay, I, okay I, maybe I might have a, a, a particular time I want to go and pray. Well, that is good. But I'm saying that even beyond the time of prayer, Worship should become our lifestyle in your office. Hallelujah. Praise God. It doesn't take you anything. You're on your laptop, on your, on your iPad. Praise God. God, I bless you. Lord, I thank you. The Bible says Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. He was strong in faith and he expressed that by giving glory to God. I give glory to God. Father, thank you for today. Father, thank you for this meal. Father, thank you that I got to my office safely. Father, thank you that I'm on Dove Media this morning. Father, thank you for the success of this world. Worship. Worship. And as long as you keep doing that and it becomes a habit, you cannot but carry the presence of God because that is the natural habitat where God lives. All right, thank you so much. So now, the Bible in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, In everything you yeah. should give thanks to God, yes, for this is His will concerning you in Christ all, Jesus. Yeah. Now, wh how, what's the correlation between thanksgiving and worship? In thanksgiving, we acknowledge God for what He has done. In other words, thanksgiving is an acknowledgement that you have received something from God. For instance, I've received life again today. I've received the gift of another day by saying thank you Jesus for the gift of life that's thanksgiving but worship goes beyond just thanking him for what he has done Don. worship is acknowledging him for who he mm. is you are my God you are my provision you are my king you even my... when he doesn't provide even, even when it, the provision you don't see the you provision. don't see it because okay he is whether you have it or not doesn't Cancel the fact or the truth that God is a provider. He's not just a provider. He is our provision. He is our pro he said, I am. He said, I am the I am that I am. I am your provision. I am your deliverance. I am your victory. So worship is acknowledging him for who he is. So every time we're expressing that fact, that truth about him, that, that's worship. It, it goes beyond, oh, I've just received a car. I've just received my salary. I've just received the cash gift. I've just received um, uh, a house gift. No. Worship is seeing God as He is and just adoring Him and just honoring Him. Loving Him. Just loving Him. Look at Job. Job had just lost all his children. Job had just lost all his investments. And the Bible tells us that Job broke down. He fell down and worship. Now that's worship. That's worship. All right. That's, that's, that's actually about God. About God. Not about what you have. Or, or, or what you everything. don't have. Or what you don't and have. And that was what Job was showing to us. That it goes beyond what I have or don't have. have. God is bigger than a place. God is bigger than my situation. God is bigger than the problems I'm facing. I'm going to worship God for who he is. Because I know that he can take care of what I'm facing. So that is worship. So in prosperity, in adversity... Worship should be intense. Worship should be fervent. Worship should be, should be done with fire. We should be done with zeal and energy. That's what makes it so beautiful. All right, thank you, sir. I love that word. It should be done with fire. At yeah. this point, we'll be going on a very short break. And when we come back, the phone line to be open so you can call in to ask Pastor your questions. Until then, a very short break.
it keeps getting better and better. Another opportunity to be blessed by divinely inspired programs on the Dove Television channel has just been made available. You can now download the Dove Television application on your Android phones, iPhones, Blackberry phones, various tablets and iPads. Just visit the appropriate app store depending on your device to download the application which enables you to watch programs and listen to the word of God from anointed men all through the day. Dove Television on direct to home decoder, on free to air satellite, on mobile internet TV, and now on mobile apps. Dove Television, taking back the power of the air. The Word of God enjoins us to study to show ourselves approved of the Lord. If you are one of the people who desire to indeed be approved of God in all your ways, and you desire to understand God's ways, then you need to take Christian literature seriously. There is a large collection of inspirational books from Pastor E. A. Adeboye, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, that you can pick and read from. Among the numerous titles are David, a man after God's heart, The Last Days, The Ultimate Financial Breakthrough, Divine Encounter, and many more and just recently added are Time of Favor and The Sovereign Lord. Get yourself a copy. Get extra copies to bless the lives of people around you as well. Books are available at all CRM bookshops, all Christian bookshops and bookstands in all RCCG province headquarters worldwide. Get yourself a copy of any of the books and be richly blessed. Welcome back. What a wonderful, you know, time out it has been with the Most High God. And I um, want to thank God for what He has done thus far, for how much He has taught us His Word. And the topic still remains acceptable worship. And we still have our dearly beloved Pastor here, and we still trust God for more light on His Word. Please do know that the phone lines are open right now, and you can call us, you can call Pastor to ask him your questions, and if you have suggestions, you can also call in to make your suggestions. We want to hear what you have to say. Now, sir, um, can an unbeliever give God acceptable worship? No. Capital. No. no. You can't. You can't. You can't. Anybody can sing a song, but only the redeemed of the Lord can offer him acceptable worship. They that most, those that most, those that most worship God, must worship him in spirit. In other words, your regenerated spirit. Because God dwells in the new, in the regenerated spirit. In the born again spirit, that is where God lives. So only a genuinely born again Christian, child of God, can offer him acceptable worship. So no strange fires. No strange fires on the altar. No, okay, all so right. So if you truly want to worship God acceptably, then you first must give your life to Christ. That is the entry point. Then you cannot start the journey into his presence. So that means anyone watching right now who hasn't truly given his life to Jesus must Christ. Must do so. Um, if you're going to church, you're just doing that in vain. Yeah, it's, and there's really Jesus no... Jesus said that in Matthew 15. He said, these people worship these people honor me with their lips and uh, they, 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 they offer me praise with their mouth he said, but their heart is, is far, far away from me. From me. he said in vain do they worship me whoa okay so when your heart is not there your spirit is not born again you're just fulfilling rituals you can as well just sit down at home and not do anything because it's in vain that's just the simple truth it's like Walking in disobedience or living in sin and claiming you are worshiping God, you are worshiping, but it's in vain. Okay. So you're, why, why waste a, your time? Why waste your time? That's what we are saying. So why, why don't why waste your time? Why waste your energy? Why don't you do what is right and do it in the proper way? Give your life to Christ. Let Christ come into your life. That is when you can begin to offer acceptable worship. We worship. have a call. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where are you calling from? Sorry, come again. I'm calling. My name is Abdul Nodeshala. I'm calling from Ketu. 
All right, please go on. We can hear you. I, I, I'm watching this, uh, this, this program on acceptable worship. Yes, sir. Uh, my conclusion is this. I believe that if you are giving God acceptable worship, you don't even have to believe that uh, God is going to bless you. Even when, you put, when, when the blessing is not going to come, mm -hmm. you don't worship God with the expectation that you must receive something. Mm -hmm. You worship God with even when... You are not even when God will not do anything for you, but you just worship Him for who God is. Yes. I think that's my belief. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, sir, for calling. Okay. All right. Amen. Thank you, sir. Yes. So it's really not about what we are. I think um, we're actually in a time in church um, that's the dispensation mm. where people actually go to God mm. because of what they're actually going to get. Mm. get. And, and that's why we, we just we, we see God as as our banker. We see him as, our, <laughs> as a dispenser of, 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 of money. Beyond that, just like the caller said, worshiping God for who he is. For who he is. For who he is. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. Right. Every other thing will follow. But worship him for who he is. Yes, please. Let's pick this call. Hello. You're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Abuja. Your name? All right. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I have a question to ask Mr. Abuja about um, acceptable worship. Okay. Hello? Yeah, go on. Hello? Okay. Yes, um, okay. Hello? All right, please do call us back. We just had um, like a reverb, I mean, a delay. So please do call us back. We'd love to hear what you, you, the question you want to ask. Pastor, please do call us back. Yes, sir. So now, what steps should be taken to enable a believer worship God? Acceptably. Acceptably. Okay. I'll, 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 we'll, firstly, you talked about obedience. Yeah. Yeah. What other steps can be taken? Okay. Let, let me just take um, this from Second Samuel chapter twelve. Sorry, sir. Before you go on, let's just pick this call. Okay, sir. Second Samuel chapter twelve. Now, hello. Oh, we lost the call. So Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter, chapter 12, twelve, verse twenty. Verse let's, twenty. Let us follow the the example of the sweet psalmist of Israel. Uh, okay. That's David, because David is one man that showed us. Okay. How to worship. He, he was a worshiper. He was a king. He was a priest. He was a prophet. But and much also more than a, a worshiper. worshiper. The, the, he was described as the sweet psalmist of Israel. Okay. Look, at what, look at what he said in um, what the Bible says about him in Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 20. The Bible says that so David rose from the earth, comma, washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes and went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he went to his own house. And when he requested, they set food before him and he ate. Look at, there were steps he took before he went to the house of the Lord to worship. And it's important that even as Christians today, we understand that. Number one, we are told that he rose from the earth. In other words, we are going to offer up acceptable worship as a believer. You must be able to separate yourself from earthly things. Mm. Okay. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 that we should set our affections on things that are above, above. not the things that are beneath. beneath. Whoa. Okay, he rose from the earth. So get yourself out of the world. Yeah, just you must be able to discharge yourself. Just like the caller or, or, that I called earlier said. Whether things are working or not working, whether you have a job or don't have a job, should not stop you from worshiping. You must be able to rise above that. And the only way you can do that is when you reset your affection on things that, that are above. above and not things that Please, are let's hold on to that one. We'll pick this call. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where are you calling from? Yes. You're, where are you calling from, Charles? I'm calling from Gabon. Okay, Gabon. All right. Go ahead. Pastor can hear you. I've, I've asked this question before, but I need a clear... I, I, I need to clear understanding. Okay. Okay. My, pro, my question is that I, I was once a senior. I, I'm living with my master, so I used to sell the, the schools and put the money. But now, I grace from God, I'm giving my life to God. Huh? Yes. Yes. 
All right. Okay. Okay, I remember Charles. I remember Charles. You called. You called. Okay. Okay, I remember. I remember Charles. You called last week. Yes, you called last week. Pastor is going to address that again, and I won't believe that you're going to be set free in Jesus' name. All right, thank you, thank you very much. Please just pay rapt attention as Pastor responds to your question. All right, sir. Mm -hmm. he, he said he, 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 he serves as an apprentice, mm -hmm. and he, before he gave his life to Jesus Christ, he's been stealing his master's goods. Okay. And, but right now, he wants, he, he's, he's not at peace, yeah. and he, wants, he, wants, he doesn't know what to, what do. to do. So what should he do, sir? First and foremost, um, thank God that the Spirit of God is at work in him. Because um, that is, or that it should be the response of the regenerated spirit, spirit to acts in the past, wrong acts in the past. What I would advise him to do is it, we, we, sometimes we want to approach these matters from a physical perspective. No. If God is, the Spirit of God is t convicting you that, look, you've done this thing, yes, you are born again now, but your master is still alive. You, there is a place of restitution. It's important for you to have that complete, total peace. There must be a place of restitution. But well, restitution is not something that you could just, just uh, delve into. It's something that should be approached prayerfully. So I would advise Charles to prayerfully seek the face of God. And Lord, I need to tell my master these things. But please, the heart of the king is in your hands. As I go to tell him this thing so that I can seek for his forgiveness and I can have peace uh, with God. Please go ahead of me. Prepare his heart. Touch his heart for me. And Holy Spirit, be with my mouth. Help me to say the right things. Is it when we commit th this kind of scenarios into the hands of God, God works miracles. I will give an example. I also, I also lived with my uncle. I, I, I grew up with my uncle. I lost my dad at a very tender age. I also lived with my uncle and, and the wife. I used to steal her things too. But when I became born again, I knew at the point when I was hearing this message of restitution that I needed to go and tell them. And the, and the consequence was, if I tell them, I'll be deported back to my village. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I struggled and struggled and struggled, but eventually I had to give it to God. And I just had to let God have his way. And I went on and I told them that this is what I have done. This is what I have done. I'm ready for any punishment that you want to dish out. I think I God, love that. I love that. Term. But as God okay. will have it and glorify his name again, God had already touched their heart. They, 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 they began to pray for me. They said, I'm forgiving you. And they blessed me and they prayed for me. And from that day, that scenario was came to an end. To an end. That, that oppression came to an end. The devil could no longer use that against me anymore. So I would ask him to approach it prayerfully. God will actually and definitely take control of everything. All right. His fears will okay. not come to pass in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. I really love what you said. You said, more or less, you damned the consequences. Yes. Like, you didn't care. Like, okay, even if they are going to deport me, even if they are going to do something um, which I wouldn't like, mm -hmm. I don't care. Yeah. And I think that's really pivotal because a lot of people are afraid of what's going to happen. Yeah. Whereas a lot of times God steps in and... Um, he, he takes control because you, you, there's every step, like I always say, every step towards obeying God will be rewarded by God. So more or less, restitution can also be said to be worship. It's a, it's a, it's acceptable worship. Acceptable worship. Okay. Because obedience precedes, it precedes it. You have heard the message, you have been convicted by the Holy Spirit, you must, have, you must make a response. You must re respond to that conviction of the Holy Spirit. And obedience will help you do that. Obedience is what is, 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 fear, is, is about to do. Do now. But the fear is there. The devil says, if you do this, you're going to lose, you lose. Your, your place, your position with your master. You might send you away. But God is beyond all those things. All right. Uh, all thank you things. for this word of encouragement. I encourage you, Charles, please take that very bold step prayerfully. And God is going to go before you. Don't worry about the consequences like Pastor said. He said he damned the consequences. And today he's a living testimony of what God has done in his life. He also requested for prayers. Right. Please, please pray for him, sir. Father, we commit Charles into your hands. We ask that right now that 
situation that challenge in his life lord step into it and let it become a testimony in the name of jesus amen let your word have a free course in the life of Charles, and let it be glorified in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank I you, Lord. Stop that oppression of the devil over his spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. That oppression in the dream that presses him down, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare him liberated and delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Also, I just want to encourage Charles, please make sure you, that you study God's word. Yeah. And also tarry in the place of prayer so that you can grow to be who God wants you to be. Yeah. So we're talking about um, steps, steps that should be taken. Sir. Yes, sir. Second step. The Bible says after he rose from the earth, he washed. He washed. He washed. And okay. How do we wash now? The Bible says cleansing them and sanctifying them by the washing of water by the word. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26. So the more you get yourself into the word of God, the more of... A washing experience that you have. Huh. Don't forget, John 15 verse 3 says, Ye are clean to the words what which are spoken, spoken unto, unto you. you. So we actually wash ourselves when we read and study the word of God. So right. that's number two. That's so, number two. Okay, please, before we go on, let's just pick this call, sir. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where are you calling from? Um, well, my name is Kenneth. I'm calling okay. from Africa. Oh, Kenneth. Yeah, you called earlier. So your question quickly. Yeah, my question is that I'm about the acceptable worship. I'm uh, talking about the substance. Uh, how do you worship God with your substance? Okay? You are being asked to give money and you are having a hundred thousand and you are giving seventy thousand. Ranging on the issue of now. And you give God, does that? You give seventy out of the hundred. Is it an acceptable worship? all right please i'm um, sorry um to understand that kenneth um that is maybe you plan on giving god a hundred thousand naira, right yeah. and um now um, the money you were expecting did not come in a hundred thousand it came in seventy thousand yeah. naira. Yeah. okay so you want to know if you give god seventy thousand naira, will they accept that money i know all right just listen to pastor as he responds to that thank you very much for calling God, God sees the heart. God sees the heart. The most important place that we should focus on is not external, it's internal. What is your heart's response to God? Okay, I want to give God a hundred thousand and I have seventy thousand. My, 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 my beloved brother, before the 70,000 came into your hand, God knew that it was 70,000 that was going to come. It's not about what you are bringing. It's about how much value. What is God worth to you? Let me put it that way. I think it's, what is God worth, worth to, you? to you? If God is worth one million naira, and you can afford one million naira, fine. If God is worth one million naira, and all you have is 50,000 naira, he doesn't change it. What God is looking at is, what, how do you see him? How do you value him? What is, how, how, how worthy is he in your eyes? Is he, it's more than money, it's more than a hundred million, it's more than two billion. No, it's the heart. So my encouragement for him is, don't condemn yourself in the things that you allow. If that is all you have, Worship God with it. With it. So you give God the seven thousand. Give him if that is what you have yeah. pledged or what you have vowed. I don't know what the situation is, but if he has vowed to give God a hundred thousand and he has seventy thousand right now, take that seventy thousand to God, Father. This is what I have now. Now, please accept, accept, it. accept it, and He will he, accept he will, it because he. Him asking you to bring is not because he needs the seventy thousand, but he needs to get you beyond the level you are now. Wow. <laughs> so right. by holding that 70,000 and not worshipping it with it, keeps it as an harvest in your hand. That's all you will ever get. Wow. But by the time you release it to him, he's able to multiply it. All so right. it goes beyond just bringing money or bringing stuff. It's, worship must be born out of honor and adoration. Respect. Respect, reverence. reverence. Those are the fundamental things that we should look out for in our worship. All so right. that's why our posture is important. How we stand in his presence, how we sit in his presence, how we sit when we come into his house, 
I will tremble at his word if we tremble at his word. Oh, that's at all. all. At all. You know, those are the things he watches out for. And that's okay. why sometimes even sheer silence in his presence and is worship. worship. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. I want to believe, Kenneth, you understand that clearly. The Holy Spirit will, you know, speak more to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So talking about the... Yeah, um, we we'll look at step one. Step one, step two. Step, step two, wash by the water of yes. the word step three it was anointed and that's where the holy spirit comes in whoa okay amazingly the next question will actually be the role of yeah. the holy spirit the in enabling spirit, no, acceptable not how we ought to pray as we ought to but the spirit help it our infirmities so the same way we know not how we ought to worship <laughs> okay <laughs> until the spirit helps us actually and worship help, uh, yeah it's uh, okay it, we have to engage the holy spirit in worship why it helps our infirmities and you and i agree that we are compassed about with many infirmities there are things that weaken our faith there are things that weaken our strength there are things that weaken our body but through the assistance and the ministry of the holy spirit we're able to we are quickened again that's why i started i said the word of the lord is quick and powerful, powerful. so the holy spirit, holy spirit comes in and quickens us and quickens our spirit man and helps us to offer acceptable worship it's when it comes and we're in communion with the holy spirit by praying in the spirit more often that the anointing rests on us to be an acceptable worshiper we can't truly honestly we can't really ac offer acceptable worship outside of the holy, holy spirit, spirit. We can't because he knows the mind of the father he, mm. he, he, he is part of the godhead and we are privileged to also have him as an ally so most times he peeps into what the father is thinking about and he comes here and stirs up something in us that can align us with that and the outcome is a miracle or a testimony so we need him sometimes you are tired but by the time you bring his presence into your into your life it quickens your mortal mm -hmm. body sometimes you are weak you don't want to go to church but by the time you get to church you speak quickens a word you hear from the preacher and that steers you spirit. up so we need him he is our helper and it amazes me today and i must say this it amazes me why many of us think that we can succeed as christians without the, the holy, holy spirit. spirit i don't know where we got that from so we can't worship without the Holy we Spirit. Can't worship without, we can't worship without the Holy Spirit. We can't pray without, without the, Holy the Holy Spirit. We can't fast wow. good without the Holy Spirit. We need is is the helper. More or less, know. because in my questions have actually been saying enabling, enabling. Yeah. He's the enabler. He's the enabler. So he's the he's the sustainer, he's the maintainer, he's the steerer. <laughs> Is the unfolder? Oh, I, think, the I think I love this. Is the energizer? All right. Well, at this point, I, I wish we could just go on and on with the teaching today. I know we are not done actually, but we trust the enabler. We trust the Holy Spirit to shed more light on His Word, you know, and teach us more than man or anyone can actually teach us actually he's the one teaching us currently right now at this point we've come to the end of today's program and um i trust that you have been blessed i trust that you have learned how to worship god acceptably we want to say a big thank you sir thank you so much for joining us today thank you. on the program and we've been blessed thank you. you know through you and um, my, our prayer for you is that God will bless you Amen. in return, Amen. increase you. Amen. His anointing in your life will not run dry Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And to you, thank you for watching. We want to say thank you to those who called in on the program. God will continually to bless you Amen. and increase you on all sides in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, please do stay tuned on Dove Television for more exciting programs. I still remain Tokumbo Oluede. God bless you.